My city's been getting quite a bit of attention in urbanist circles lately due to its plan to spend $100 million over four years on active transportation. YouTube channels like Shifter and Oh The Urbanity have released episodes on the topic. There was also a recent episode of The War on Cars that focused on my city. I've been trying to follow how this money will be spent, but details have been limited so far. I'm excited that my city is spending so much money to build active transportation infrastructure, but at the same time, I'm quite worried since my city has a history of building pretty low quality bike infrastructure. I have a video from earlier this year showing some brand new infrastructure that has some exceptionally bad sections. But let's try to stick to what's proposed for the $100 million. A few weeks ago, I was able to find a map of what's being planned. I downloaded the spatial data and rode four of the proposed routes. In this episode of Bike Bike Nudge Nudge, let's look at a brief history of the project and what's been done so far. In addition, I'll show four different planned routes and give my best guess on what will be built there. Links to everything I will mention in this episode are down below in the notes. Please consider liking this video if bike infrastructure speculation interests you, and subscribe if you'd like to see future videos about this $100 million project. In December of 2022, City Council approved a budget of $100 million between 2023 and 2026 to improve active transportation. If the money was spent equally over the four years, $25 million per year is 0.7% of the city's total yearly budget of $3.6 billion. I have been talking with other cycling advocates in the city and, as far as I've been able to find out, there hasn't been any public engagement on any of the routes. Just very limited engagement with certain groups. At best, we're on rung 3 of Arnstein's ladder. There is information on the city's website that states what to expect. Protected bike lanes are great. Even considering painted bike gutters in 2024 is terrible. Nothing was built in 2023 and, as of the end of June, nothing has been built in 2024, but nearly 16 kilometers of bike infrastructure is planned. According to the map, 28 and 27 kilometers are planned in 2025 and 2026 respectively. If the entire $100 million is only being spent on 71 kilometers of bike infrastructure, that means we're paying about $1.4 million per kilometer, which seems a little high for bike infrastructure, but is very cheap compared to SUV infrastructure. The province is just finishing spending $100 million over five years to add one travel lane in each direction to 18 kilometers of the city's ring road. That's 5.6 million per kilometer. As an aside, the province claims increase in the number of lanes by 50% will increase capacity by 300%. One more lane will fix it, bro. The city is also expanding another freeway at a cost of over $1 billion for 11 kilometers, or $91 million per kilometer. That project also includes several overpasses. Also for comparison, the city spent $10 million to fill potholes in 2023 and over $60 million to clear snow over the winter of 2022 2023. $25 million per year isn't a lot of money in my city compared to what's spent on SUV infrastructure. That's enough quantitative analysis. Let's do a qualitative analysis of what I'm expecting from the four planned routes. The first route is 102nd Avenue. This wide sidewalk was built in 2016 and is a major commuter route from the west to downtown. It was only completed up to 136th Street at which point you're expected to ride through the community to connect to bike infrastructure going further west and south. I'm very happy to see 102nd Ave extended to 142nd Street. An urban LRT is being constructed nearby and the wide sidewalk will connect people and bikes with one of the LRT stops. I am hopeful that the city will realize it destroyed too much stuff in order to build an LRT that should have a small footprint. The extension of the wide sidewalk will connect people and bikes to what should become a dense node of places to live eat, and shop. It looks like the sidewalks beside the LRT are well under 3 meters, so should not be considered bike infrastructure, and that makes the 102nd Avenue extension the only proper access to the east. Since wide swaths of entire streets were raised to build the LRT, it would have been easy and smart to build high quality bike infrastructure parallel to the tracks. But it appears that won't be happening. I do have two gripes with what appears to be coming to 102nd Avenue. As these little markers seem to indicate, it will be a wide sidewalk. Fewer drivers and SUVs should be coming out of the neighborhood on this section, but drivers rolling through the stop sign and blocking the bike lane is an issue along this wide sidewalk. The second gripe is that 102nd Avenue is now pretty much a dead end. As far as I know, a connection to the infrastructure to the south is not planned. 
Expect to see more people riding on this narrow, cracked sidewalk. Overall, I think 102nd Avenue is great, with small things that could be improved. The second route is, I guess, what the city is calling a local street bikeway. Part of what's being proposed is already considered bike infrastructure, if you consider share markings and a few wayfinding signs to be bike infrastructure. These neighborhood streets are currently quiet enough that the ice cream guy thinks it's safe to entice small children to leave the park and cross the street mid-block. I really don't know what the city was proposing to improve these streets for people on bikes. Will they ban SUVs close to the school so more children will bike? Will modal filters be installed? Small traffic circles at intersections? I find neighborhoods safe to bike through, especially when there are drivers who will wave you through when you have a yield and they don't. The thing I don't like about bike infrastructure in neighborhoods is that, unless you live there, the routes are only for commuting. There are almost zero destinations along the route. They tend to be twisty and confusing, and the connections between neighborhoods can be poor. One more issue with this route is that for one month out of the year, the street is choked with SUVs every evening. Yes, the proposed bike route runs along Candy Cane Lane, which I have previously covered on this channel. I don't know why my city builds bike infrastructure and then closes it for street markets and festivals. I love great destinations right next to bike infrastructure. I don't love the little high quality bike infrastructure in my city being closed so often. As for this proposed neighborhood route, I think it'll be a minor improvement on something that's currently pretty meh. Turning some stop signs so people biking can flow better and more wayfinding to get people to this bridge are all that's needed. The money would be better spent elsewhere. The third route I'm going to look at could be good, but also has a huge missed opportunity. 107 Avenue will be another commuter freeway to bring people from the west and north towards downtown. There are some small shops on the west end of the route, but it's mostly the backs of neighborhoods. I'm interested in what will happen at this traffic circle. Normally, I love traffic circles, but the drivers in my city are terrible and my city encourages traffic flow around the circle that I don't agree with. I don't think my city will follow best practices to make getting around the circle safe for people on bikes. For the entirety of 107 Avenue, I expect to get another wide sidewalk. There will be a few issues with drivers blocking the sidewalk as the neighborhoods are designed to face inwards so that there are few exits. This road had been planned to be part of an urban freeway that fortunately never happened. There is so much extra space that it looks like traffic engineers were originally thinking about six or eight lanes instead of the four that currently exist. This route does have one part that is a major missed opportunity. At the east end, the planned route jogs one block to the south and connects to a sidewalk that only takes you to the river valley. It would be better to connect to these quiet streets and these painted door zones. This would connect the proposed bike route to a power center and the city's downtown. However, that would require cleaning up this active transportation nightmare. Around this bridge, 107 Avenue explodes from four lanes to seven. The extra lanes encourage drag races to where the road narrows again as drivers try to jump the queue during the hour or two each day that the bridge is actually congested. This slip lane is especially dangerous. Visibility is great when you approach from the east, but it's terrible when you approach from the west. People and SUVs are hidden from each other by the large bushes. If the city was actually serious about encouraging biking and its commitment to Vision Zero, it would put this entire stretch of 107 Avenue on a diet, down to four lanes, extend the proposed bike lane across the bridge, and remove the slip lanes. I think this route is mostly meh with one spot I'm curious about and one major missed opportunity. The last route I'm interested in is the 95th Avenue route. There is currently a renewal plan further to the west that is not part of the $100 million. This road used to have a painted bike gutter. It was delayed for two years because this and other churches didn't want to lose street parking one day per week. This church has a parking lot on its property that has a surface area larger than the building and lots of possible parking on streets in the neighborhood. I used to use this painted bike gutter nearly every day to get to work. I actually felt more comfortable without the lane. The road is overbuilt so drivers can easily give a person on a bike the entire lane. The configuration with the bike lane shifted drivers closer to people on bikes. Also, paint is not protection and the city tended to use the bike lane to store snow in the winter, making it unrideable for three or four months out of the year. The best part, however, was where it ended in the east. Some traffic engineer thought it'd be a super safe, great idea to have people on bikes line up beside SUVs at this light. Two lanes of traffic go in, one comes out. I was a somewhat fit, aggressive cyclist so I could beat SUVs across the intersection, 
but a wiser person would do what's illegal in my city and take the sidewalk. As bad as this bike lane was, its demise is what really annoys me. Less than two years after the lanes were installed, a city councillor thought that they weren't being used enough, so should be removed. Not that there was ever a minimum use criteria as part of the route. Anyway, about two weeks later, council voted to remove the lanes, and two weeks after that, nearly all indication that the lanes ever existed were wiped from this earth. I have another video on this channel that shows how quickly the city crews can remove bike infrastructure, even during an arctic deep freeze right after Christmas. There's a link to a CBC article about the removal of the bike lanes in the show notes. I disagree with the first quote in the article from Councillor Knack, that there was a lack of consultation. I was at the consultations. I remember one old man telling a city employee that he wanted to slam my head on the display table because I was in support of the lanes. The consultations were the usual in that the city planners designed something that they liked and they weren't serious about accepting any feedback from people who actually wanted to use the proposed bike infrastructure. After being a frequent user of the short-lived painted bike gutter, I'm extremely curious about this proposed route. The renewal project further to the west is just taking away a service road to create a wide sidewalk. There's not enough space along the east part of 95th Ave for a wide sidewalk, so the city either needs to buy a strip of property and rebuild fences, or it has to take away space from SUVs. I think this route is an important connection and I'm intrigued to see what's proposed. My guess is there will be a wide sidewalk on the south side of the road to connect what's already being planned further to the west. No SUV lanes will be harmed in the making of this route. And that's my look forward to four routes being proposed as part of my city spending $100 million over four years to accelerate the expansion of the active transportation network. Overall, I'm rather underwhelmed. I realize that these are just four routes, so in theory, there's a possibility of some great infrastructure being built. I chose these four routes because they are in a part of the city that I know very well. This video is already very long, so you can see why I cannot look at all 71 of the proposed kilometers. Plus, before the infrastructure is added, many of the routes are currently very unsafe or deadly to ride. I tend to post videos of any planning engagement sessions I attend and some reviews of what the city actually builds using the $100 million. I hope you'll come back to watch those videos. Thanks for watching.